Buckle up, buttercup, there's fuckery to discuss. A writer, an editor, and a reader walk into an indie bookstore and start an unhinged indie monster and alien smut podcast, because why the fuck not? Hello, and welcome to our fourth episode here at Smutty Stories. We are three trash cats in a trench coat in our little critter coven, and our episode is going to be about Yeti and Snowman. <laughs> welcome. Are you Yeti for love? <laughs> abominably adorable what i'm ready for a snow cone bucket of yeti ice cream mm. Mm -hmm. actually none of the ones that i read this month were all like a like a come tastic you know you know some of the books here like well that's a lot uh none of yeah. the ones i read the, the, the <laughs> ones that i read no not overly because they, they were much shorter yes yeah, yeah. so yeah. they did it's like they didn't have the time but yeah uh, had they been a little bit more robust, they definitely would have had more detail. <laughs> uh, I feel like cumtastic needs to be added to the vernacular. Uh, I do love rather, that word. That is a good one. Yeah, you're welcome. Rather than fluid play, let's just call it cumtastic. cum-tastic. Put that in the tr tr trigger warnings. Um, well, fluid play <laughs> also, I mean, there's lots of different bodily fluids. Let's talk 2023 goals for the podcast, for life. Can we stop using the phrase new year, new me? Because I am so sick of that. And I think 2020 itself, just put that one in the shitter. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's it's same me, same strange bitch, mm -hmm. just different year. New year, same, same shit. Yeah, mm -mm, no, new same year. Soup just reheated. <laughs> Yeah, mm -mm, no. I will acknowledge that like 2022 was like a year of change for yes. me, a, yeah. a little bit. Um, but <laughs> I still the same me. I'm yeah. I think 2023 is going to be like the year of challenges. Like audacity. It's the year what? of audacity. <laughs> we get Our audacity or just audacity being thrown at us. <laughs> no, us us throwing audacity back in the face of the year. All right. Yeah. I, I like yeah. that. I like that yeah. rather than, you know, the, no, the no. other way around. No, no, yeah. not that. Not the world having audacity. It's had enough audacity no. for like the past half a decade. It can <laughs> slow down and stop. It's I'm yeah. trying to fling it like Yeti poo. Just like, <laughs> here's my audacity, bitch. Take it. Have you seen that uh, in me, Mrs. Like, I would just like to live through some precedented times. Like... <laughs> That is the best way to put it. Like we just had a cat three hurricane <laughs> essentially hit us here on the California coast. It's, it's been cyclone. raining for days in California. What the fuck? I mean, there was a six year old that just shot his teacher. Carol Baskin's oh. husband was found in like Argentina. Carol Baskin's husband was found? What? 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 No. no. What? Like Mexico or South America. I don't remember where, but he, that fucker's alive. She didn't feed him to the tiger. Oh no, well, no, I feel bad for hating her. No, I, I don't. She's a terrible human being. I never watched I... it. And oh I'm my god. I'm so glad. Oh um, that was early, like deep COVID times. I would yeah, never that, watch that. That kind was the of first thing. two months of COVID was nothing That's... but Tiger King. Did you see the meme where this this, this gay couple they got they dressed up as the Tiger King guys and they literally dyed their cow to look like a tiger. They died the photo cow. Shoot. The yeah. cow. Yep. Gave it stripes. Yep. And it's the best thing ever. Oh my god. I'll have it was like the zeitgeist of 2020. Like early 2020 was making sourdough bread and Tiger King. Like mm -hmm. that's that's what it was. And toilet paper. When the toilet paper crisis hits, I will have PTSD from this shit. Like shit. People. People will be my my children and grandchildren will be like, Granny, what was the what was COVID like? It'll be like flashbacks. <laughs> I, I had to, the whole thing was I had to wait for over three hours at Walmart by the back doors for them to unload one small tiny pallet of toilet paper and take my little tiny collection of toilet paper to the front because they only allowed us to take a certain amount. And there was not enough for everybody that was waiting for it. People were buying bidets. They were sold out on Amazon. I looked into it. <laughs> I've actually wanted to get one because I'm like, wait. That's right. We could do that. We're in America. We, we don't do that. Yeah. 
especially yeah. if you own your own home, like changing to a bidet is a pretty straightforward process. Okay. 2023 plans for the podcast recording once a month is going mm-hmm. to continue. Yeah. We have some mini episodes that are in the work that we will be having come out. I know that we are going to be doing one for Valentine's Day that kind of dives into why monster fucking. And I'm excited about that one because I have some specific reasons. Then this is still very much in the formation stages. Smutty Stories is going to be taking on building a charity anthology, which mm-hmm. I am very excited about. I've wanted to do an anthology since I started writing. It's a, I think it's a good way for a new writer to start. We will be at the helm of a charity anthology that is going to benefit climate change. We haven't picked an exact organization that we're going to be working with. This was a fever dream that we kind of all were like, I guess we're doing this now. So in the year of our Lord, 2023, we're doing this. Which Lord? Yeah, within a with a matter in within a matter of five hours. Five hours. We That's did the also, same thing with the podcast. We I mean, did. It's kind of our mo at this point. Mm-hmm. It's but flying mm-hmm. by seat of pants. We have no broomsticks. Woo! It's just seat of pants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go into Yetis. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna blame uh, Carlotta for Yetis. That was her idea. I was just thinking and of something that was winter and that's the first thing that popped into my head. Yetis, I have learned, are cryptids. And I also mm-hmm. had to learn what a cryptid was because I thought it meant dead things. So my bird is growing up so fast. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let Carlotta explain what a cryptid is in case you are also as stupid as I am. So word breakdown. Crypt, right? You think crypt as in mummies, as in ancient Egypt you know, a tomb. That's what you think of, right? But that's because crypt means hidden or covered. It's a mystery, right? It's a hidden mystery. We don't know. We don't know. I don't know why I feel like I'm doing Shatner right now. Um, <laughs> but that's that's where crypto comes from, which makes me really curious about cryptocurrency. Anyway, moving on. Hidden so, currency. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> you were so excited about that. <laughs> hey, I just learned that crypt doesn't mean dead. Okay. It's education. Uh, it's education. <laughs> and then of course it I think is basically means being. So mm-hmm. it's a being that is a mystery. So it's something that we don't actually know if it exists or not because we don't have super solid proof of its existence. Scientific proof. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, uh, Loch Ness monster, uh, Mothman um the jersey devil like all of the the those types of beings those are cryptids so we don't actually know if they exist there's a lot of eyewitness accounts but there's no hard evidence that's irrefutable um and then there's actually an area of study called cryptozoology which Mm -hmm. is actually breaking it's like the study of cryptids um both historically throughout time and then currently and also trying to seek to find and identify cryptids and uh, find solid scientific proof. Could you imagine being like an 18 year old and being like, mom, I think I want to go study cryptozoology. <laughs> My mom would be like, you want to study dead? You would need to have more understanding parents than you and I, Jen. <laughs> yes. Also, mm-hmm. it's so one other thing with um like cryptozoology and everything Mm -hmm. it is a pseudoscience and a subculture Mm -hmm. and that's why we everybody is so rabid for mothman Mm. that that's a good way to put that man yeah pass on Mothman. this month um took some trial and error for me because uh what my fellow podcast hosts know but did not take into account when we took on yetis is that I am deathly afraid of monkeys. And though yetis and monkeys are not the same thing, um, they, they do carry some similarities. Okay. I started with Yeti wear um, and it was, it was a little too, it, it was a little too much. I had to DNF it and it's nothing against the author or the, like, it was just not for me because of my 
personal monkey issues. Actually, one of the books that I did want to read first was Cuddling My Chichenya, which we're going to talk about, Um, but it didn't come out until the 13th and it's the 14th as of recording. So I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get it, but I reached out to the author, uh, Marilyn Barr, and she was very happy to provide me an arc, which meant that I was able to read it in time. Uh, Chichenya is uh, basically a, the Russian version of a Yeti uh, there in Siberia. Um, they look a little bit more humanoid than some pictures of Yetis I've seen, which is, I think, also one of the reasons I was more like, okay, I can handle this. Um, so the main character is a, um, an academic, and they think they have um, uncovered the body of an early man um, because the permafrost is melting because of global warming which is real. Global warming is real, everyone. They, she is going on um, a dig to see if they can um, do more research on this, uh, basically what they fe- think is a frozen early man. You find out along the way that it is not a frozen early man. It is, it's a, a Chechenya that has passed, sadly. You realize that there are, they're still living in the area. In her travel to Siberia, uh, gets separated from the people that are doing the the dig and is saved by a uh, a living Chechenya um and and we're gonna go with Artyom Artyom um A R T Y O M and she is just as somebody who has been studying this for like her entire academic career she is just delighted Aww. um to <laughs> to uh to meet him to realize that he exists and that they are not extinct that uh and so uh things with them uh get spicy pretty quickly because she is she has gone to Siberia looking for these creatures and was hoping to inspect like long since passed and to realize that there's someone alive that she can communicate with um, in Russian is just, she's just super pumped about it. They do have their own version of faded mates, which a lot of the words um, are in Russian and I'm, and the author uh, Marilyn Barr said she would help guide me through. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to say it's in Russian, but it was really sweet. The way they claim their woman when they decide that they want to like be mates is through chasing, which um, if you're new to this podcast, chasing is one of my favorite things. I was a fan. I was a big fan of this. It is just out has barely any reviews right now because it just came out. So I, I would recommend um the the Chechenya is still a little on the monkey side for me, but I I still devoured this book in like a day and a half and I, I enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if Yetis are something I will add to my repertoire, but I did enjoy it. Spice level two, three. All righty. Jersey. Yes. Rock, paper, scissors. All right. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Oh, no. All right. Again. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess I go. All right. So I guess I won. So um <laughs> so the book that I chose this month is um Amber Goes Yeti. And it's book three of four of the Jules uh it's Silver Springs is like a multi-series thing with different characters, and this is like Amber and the Jules Cafe, and that's what the, this like four book series is about i don't know if there's going to be more or not um and it's all by mia harlan and it was actually a, uh, originally part of a reverse hair anthology called snowmen and um it's not available anymore unfortunately um but what's cool about this book is that it takes place in this town called silver springs and it has to do with amber who has this weird chameleon shifting ability now i didn't read the first two books so i was still okay i wasn't lost um so i was able to pick up on everything but i know that there's like some pieces that i'm missing but um she's got her shifting ability and then her three mates are julian who is this witch who just like his magic is awry all the time just slapstick off the deep end um And then there's Chase and Wes who just like ground those two. So Amber and Julian are the ones causing the shit storm. (laughs) Chase and Wes are the ones that like, no, no, dear, come here, come back down to earth, (laughs) down to earth. 
<laughs> okay. Um, so what's cool is, too is this book takes place from multiple points of view, which is nice. And it's only about 66 pages. So it's really short, very sweet. Um, it's a winter, winter little novella, which is nice. Um, it takes place in the Jules Cafe. They're getting ready for a midwinter festival. Julian, his sense of magic is so out of control. He decides he's going to make cozy cocos to warm everybody up because their thermostat is going awry. He makes said cocos and then shenanigans start occurring. And a Yeti shows up, and since Amber has this uncontrollable shifting ability, where she shifts into beings that are around her, and she doesn't know when or how, it just, just happens, um, she turns into a Yeti, and then every time she gets cold, it, it turns into a Yeti to get warm again. <laughs> Um, so you can see how this would be like randomly turns into a Yeti could be a problem when you're planning a festival. A little. Just a yeah. little bit. Okay. Um, she's very insecure about her shifting all the time and how it affects her mates. Um, because she's afraid that they're going to stop loving her for shifting all the Aww. time. Oh, and especially when she turns into a Yeti that's like, she's just like, I'm, no. <laughs> This is not fun. Can't I be a druid instead? Yeah. <laughs> and like her her reaction to turning into a yeti and then her mate's reaction into seeing her as a yeti are just hilarious. It's great. It's I'm great sure. fun to have. And then of course, yeti have urges. <laughs> like most beings would. So of course there's yeah. some smashing. It wraps up very nicely. It's a very short, sweet rom-com. And I actually want to go back and read the first two books. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Good. What rating would you give this one? I'd probably give it like a three and a half. Like, I wish it was longer. Totally fair. Totally fair. Okay. I wish there was more spice. But then I always wish for more spice. Which is why you end up writing the Orc some spice. Bible. Yeah. yeah the alcove scene and then also um uh, three chapters of getting eaten out yeah maybe we should uh, call it the orc kama sutra yeah no perfect. kama sutra not karma sutra kama sutra yes mm -hmm. <laughs> love that <laughs> what is that lots of published positions. by the way yeah any updates on uh ruger's pro <laughs> <laughs> so awful um yes <laughs> <laughs> yes actually um uh next friday oh so, yeah. as, as as long as everything goes smoothly i'm gonna so next friday because we are recording right now on the 14th would be the 21st which means that at the time that this this podcast comes out ruger's pearl will be available should be out <laughs> should be out this thing I know that you both will scream at me if it's not. So, and as I'm just, long as you're aware, that's the important thing. I, I have, this sounds so weird and so wrong uh, at the same time, completion anxiety. With projects, not with yeah. fun times. With, just with projects. And, <laughs> you're going to have completion gonna anxiety. Okay, guys. Okay, if you're going to have completion anxiety, I would rather have it with projects than fun times. I mean, honestly, let's true. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, the good news is, is that it's already pretty much all edited and pretty much all formatted. So um, the formatted will come up. Formatted. I'm sorry. It made me words. Her brain got broken. It did. <laughs> Shut up. Um, <laughs> if you are new to this podcast um ruger's pearl is the first book in um carlotta's orc match series there is a prequel out currently uh called thorn's dove which is amazing and was it's one of so my good. introductions to orcs and now i'm fucking obsessed with orcs and obsessed with fucking orcs so the reason why we are pushing her so hard to get this out is that we have both read beta read and edited this book and it Since needs to the be beginning and yeah it needs we, we need a physical copy now, ma'am. So um, we are strongly encouraging Carlotta to get this out into the world. Um, we uh, are 
Carletta, have we decided that we're calling it high fantasy erotica? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> She's blushing. Look at her. She's adorable. <laughs> um so yes i tend to see erotica that works but it's also sci-fi which is a problem is it mm. like five genres in one just it call is, it but it's awesome call it historical fiction and see what happens <laughs> <laughs> it is not that <laughs> no <laughs> you totally could have called thorn's dove historical fiction technically i could yeah. have because yeah. it happened in the 70s exactly yeah. Mm. It's it's history at this point. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm, back when Roe v. Wade was still law. Yeah, right? yeah. Those were the <sighs> days. Oh, I love uh, I love that the only one star review I have on my book so far was posted on September 11th, and it was because the book was too political. I I read these books to get away from this type of thing in the real world. And I'm like, excuse you, do you not understand that science fiction and fantasy are generally progressive? Star Trek, hello. Anyway, it's so it Star laugh. Trek, Star Trek, the first uh, kiss between an African-American and um, yes. on film. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't even like Star Trek. And I know that. I mean, uh-huh. I don't dislike Star Trek. I just don't know things. OK, I'm, I'm very small. <laughs> that's okay star, i'm not a star trek had a lot of major tv first and that was mm-hmm. one of the big big ones yeah and science mm-hmm. fiction's always been really progressive i mean yeah. yes and yeah. if it wasn't for a woman it never would have been made yeah by Just a black saying. woman wasn't it no i thought it was uh lucy ball uh lucy ball was like the executive producer like, oh, like of... pushed oh pushed, you get mean it for star trek because Got yes. it. sorry yeah. i was thinking about the genre no, although that too. Yeah, yeah. I love it. No, I'm, I'm talking about Star Trek itself, <laughs> not the genre. Anything you can do, I can do. Bleeding. What? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> women are awesome. Just saying. I, now I need to look this up while we're talking. Okay. So okay. Jersey, you go, and I will find out who wrote the first science fiction novel. What wasn't the um, first one? The Frankenstein. Frankenstein. It was Frankenstein, written by Mary Shelley. Yeah, it's not a very good book. True. I hate Frankenstein, but um, it is. But more like, but that's more like. Oh well, no, it is sci-fi. Yeah, but what? Yeah. But like a space odyssey one. Oh, I don't know. That one's that one. more monster, and this I'm thinking more like out of. Well, I it's still science. Fi- I mean, she. I bet she was a woman that first wrote day. Alien fucking. Wait, doesn't the monster have sex with a woman? Did I imagine I, that? Or did I just hope for that? I should have seen the signs. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. I, well, I mean, in some of the adaptations, yes. In some of the adaptations, yes. All right. There's Frankenstein's wife. I mean, I've yeah. seen Young Frankenstein. My God, that one's funny. I've seen it. I saw a thing. You saw that one. She's seen something, Carlotta. <laughs> I saw it in high school. I bet you my teacher got in trouble for showing it to us. A teacher would get in trouble for showing it now. I doubt they got in trouble back then. As someone who teaches criminal justice, you would be surprised what I get away with. I don't know. It's America. <laughs> mm. I just have them sign a waiver and I put it like on the third page. Like your kids will be watching rated R movies and it's on the third page of the syllabus. None of them ever read it. They sign it off and I'm like, not legally liable. <laughs> I had one teacher unintentionally. Okay, so she purposely turned on the movie Tommy Boy as a fun thing for us to watch because is Tommy was... Boy the pinball wizard? It... No. <laughs> no. Um <laughs> not at all. I don't okay. even know what the hell that is, but I can tell don't, you no. Don't watch it. I won't look it up. <laughs> um so Tommy Boy was an 80s movie. And funny, but so not appropriate to show to high schoolers in school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she hadn't seen it in years. And all oh, she knew no. was it was one of her favorites growing up. And we oh, made no. it like 20 minutes into the movie. And there's only eight of us in the room. 
and we're all dying. And she's like, I have to turn this off. I'm going to get in trouble. It's like, we're already here. Uh, it's already happened. It's already happened. Yeah. yeah. So the book that I read this month was Yeti Yuletide by Francesca Rose. It is technically book two in a series, uh, or at least a couplet. It's just the two of them out so far. The first one was Yeti in the Mist. I did not read that one. I did not know that was a thing until after I read this one. This one is a Regency romance. It's adorably funny, in my opinion. <laughs> so Jane is our, our, our female main character. She is doing her best to run away from an abusive husband. And Regency times, she's basically his property. So she's doing everything she can to hide. And she needs a job. She needs money in order to survive away from him and away from her crazy ass uncle who basically sold her to him. And she ends up being a bookkeeper for a woman who owns two pleasure houses. One specifically for the women who would need to be cured of their hysteria. And then one for the men. <laughs> Should we get into the history of hysteria? Let's talk about hysteria. Yes, you what? might actually be able to explain that one a little bit better than I can. I'd like to talk about the history of hysteria. And I'd also like to admit that I don't know what a Regency romance is. Time period. Yeah. So think like Pride and Prejudice time frame. Okay. Okay. And that's so our executive producer asked me last night and I was like, I don't know. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> actually no i'm not even I, I should i shouldn't lie i made something up i was like i think it means historical yeah ba basically <laughs> like jane austen pride and prejudice that sort of time frame okay yeah okay yeah okay so regency yetis yeah that's yes. wild yes we, we're we've gone down a hole we've gone down the rabbit hole and we're not coming out <laughs> I, I don't want to read rabbits though sorry okay Okay. <laughs> um, so Won't make you okay. The history of hysteria, a very abridged version, is when <laughs> the men folk decided to take on the midwifery that would you know that women have had forever um, for women's health. Any time a woman was of a ungenteel disposition had too many opinions, talked too much, i.e. a gossip, or any number of things that a man did not like. She was labeled with hysteria and could be put away in an asylum. And so we would all be in asylums. Basically. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, okay. So that basically got them out of the way. And they just decided that they were going to try to cure this hysteria in a lot of different ways. Some of them are completely barbaric. Um, the, actually, there's a movie called Stonehurst Asylum, which actually covers part of it, and it's pretty accurate. And I, I was like, holy shit, that is what this is. But they would, they, uh, some of the treatments for hysteria, because, you know, the uterus is... Heroin, mm -hmm. cocaine, pelvic massages. And there were there were even pamphlets for men how to cure your wife of hysteria by giving her a pelvic massage. They Where did those go? Men pamphlet. need those. Right. Like you now we just know it's bring those back. <laughs> it's like, geez, your wife is cranky because you haven't fucked her and give her an orgasm in like three months. Or you fucked her and left her hanging. That yeah, yeah, bastards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so there's hysteria, and uh, in Paulette's pleasure palace is the the one for the the women, I believe. <clears throat> no, no, that's the one for the men, and the one for the women is the tea room. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and. Jane has become the bookkeeper and is doing a very good job. And, and Paulette does not want to see her go anywhere. It's like, I trust you. You're doing great. Let's go shopping. <laughs> One of uh, Paulette's bodyguards, I guess you could say. She's got two main ones. Um, 
she's got an American Sasquatch who's brown. And then she's got a Yeti who's from the Himalayas, I believe. They, The Yeti say it very differently. I'm not even going to attempt it at all. It's okay. the Himalayas. And so he's, he wears his suit. He just doesn't wear shoes and doesn't have anything on his hands because the, for him, even though we would be cold in certain parts of England, for him, it is just too bloody hot. And Jane is doing her best to hide from her her husband, uh, the, the Yeti. I'm going to attempt to pronounce his name properly. I don't know if I am. Milan, Milan, it's M-I-L-A-N-N. -N. Milan, Milan. Milan? <laughs> Milan? I don't know. That's, that, Yeti man. That's his name. Okay. Yeti man. Yeah. He he tries to walk her back to her 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 dorm. I guess she's she was living in a a home for respectable young ladies because that was a big thing back then, where you know single unattached women would live in these places just for the women and the 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 landladies who ran them were very very strict and insane. <laughs> You have to be here by a certain time. I will lock the door. If you don't come back, I'm going to assume you're doing nefarious things and you won't be allowed to stay. As a history teacher can confirm, this is real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Jane and Milan are walking back to her dorm because it's late and he does not feel comfortable with her walking there by herself. Aww. So he, he is escorting her home and a, a guy comes up and says... I know you. Your husband's looking for you. Let's take you home. She doesn't want to go home. Milan steps in the way. Guy pulls out a gun and he gets shot. It's it went through. He's fine. But she has to take him inside to catch him up. And her landlady is just screaming and squealing and just all kinds of unhappy and kicks her out. And he becomes overly protective after that. Aww. And she becomes overly protective because you saved me. I have to fix this somehow. So she basically becomes his nurse and has moved into the tea room building with the rest of the people that work there who all adore her. Aww. And she's 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 basically their Jen, who is the baby bird needs to learn a few things to understand the vernacular. <laughs> and they're all so very willing to help. And it's so cute. And they all just adore her so very much. Um, but at one point, her husband and his his thugs and his henchmen find her at the tea room. So she has to try and run in order to protect herself. And Milan's like, you're not going anywhere without me. No. So they they go stay with his cousin and, okay. and his mate in the country. And Yes. Fun fun times ensue a couple of times. This oh. is only 70 something pages. It's very quick, but it's very adorable. Oh. I it just there was a whole bunch of ho oh, ho oh, kind of moments for me. <laughs> I I enjoyed it quite a bit. It might not be everybody's cup of tea. Ha 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 ha. But I I would give it a three to four. Uh, stars in general uh, on the spicy scale probably about a two to three just because I would have preferred a lot more detail but that sounds adorable it was so cute <laughs> um I kind of want to read that one now I did yeah. I always assumed Regency romance meant history but I like never asked so I was like well I'll find out eventually um <laughs> just if you hear Regency just think Jane Austen and you're basically in the time frame mentally so you're good okay okay all right so the last book on the docket is uh, Madison's An Abominable Affair now this is a, a nice little short it's um about a little over 100 pages it was originally included in the Big Feels um, charity anthology which was a limited run so it only ran for about three months and it was launched last year uh, on valentine's day 
and they were cute little romances. The trope was size difference. So you had everything from the mountain's mate, which was like a huge giant and a, a, a human woman who was dangling from his, his giant cockadoodle-doo in his pants while they were trying to escape uh, <laughs> down to like, you know, not, not too much of a difference. Well, yours was Damn. in there and yours yeah, was yeah. A, a respectable. I mean, not, not unrespectable, but it was a less of a difference. Yeah. It was like <laughs> than, a, a, than a, little over a, yes. foot, a little bit of over yeah. a foot of a difference. Um, one was a giant hulking orc and the other one was just like a chubby tall chick. Um, but yes. So, the nice thing about charity anthologies, if you guys were not aware, especially if they're limited run, that means that once the charity is complete, then all the rights for the stories revert back to the authors. So they can do with those stories whatever they like. So um, some people just go ahead and straight publish the short as it was. Some people expand upon it. Some people don't put them back out. Um, for example, for Thorn Stuff, I expanded it to be a 65,000 word novel. Other people just put it out as is. So I know that Maddie Sin, I don't know if she added any more to it or not. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it's very cute. It's very sweet. So it's called uh, An Abominable oh. Affair. And we have uh, Tapiza, who is our female main character. And she is living in uh, a mountainside cave um, with her sick mother and her two younger brothers. And they have been kind of left behind by their tribe because her, her mom has been too sick to travel. Um, and her mom is known for being the, being this like fierce huntress and um, has taken Warrior down Warrior Yeti. Princess. Warrior yeah. princess. Warrior this is, princess. Th this is like almost prehistoric times. This isn't like yes. current or like th th yeah. this is like on yeah. earth, but like a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Tapisa is actually not super great at hunting, but because her mom's sick, she has to she like has try to and try <laughs> make it work. Um, and she is like out trying to hunt for her uh, starving family, and she comes across um, a yeti who. Um, sees that she's kind of a hot mess and is like okay well i'm, yeah. I'm not gonna kill her um so he decides to kind of take pity on her and feed her um and then strikes a deal with her um of i will help provide for your family if you come back and visit me um every full moon and at the at that point, it's kind of not clear like what the visit's for. It's not like, and we're gonna fuck. It's like just I just need some company. I alone. enjoy your company. I am yeah. bored and alone. Yeah, yeah. So, which is fair because Yetis are often portrayed as like solitary creatures. So the fact that and this uh, especially. Yeah. yeah. So he sticks true to his word. She sticks true to her word. Um and um. First time she comes back, uh, there's no there's no sexy times, but they're definitely like clearly attracted to each other. There's tension. Yeah, there's yes. some tension there. Um, it kind of it expands from there, uh, where every full moon she is delayed from returning. Um, I th it's the second or third full moon. What Jersey? Uh, do you remember? I believe it was the the third full moon that she got delayed and it was because her mom started to get better and wanted to keep her around a little bit more and you know see how she was doing take care of the boys and so because of that the yeti comes down from the top of his mountain to figure out where the heck are you and he they're able to talk for a second and she explains to him it's like I didn't want to come up the mountain in case my mother understood what was happening and would send the tribe later to come kill you. I liked this book. I enjoyed reading it, but I was kind of like, oh, okay, we're having sex in a tree right now. Let's, all right, let's go. Um, in a tree so, behind a bush. Let, let's have yeah. some fun over here before the, the toddlers and sick mom come out and find us. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So ultimately, Tapiza has to make a decision as to whether or not she is going to stay on the hillside with her new um, Yeti uh, friend or if she is going to tra- travel back with the tribe now that her mom is well. Some of the, the tropes, uh, without giving away the ending, there is a pregnancy trope. I enjoyed this, but I will say I wish it had like a hundred more pages. Like I had, I liked the characters. Yeah. I liked the plot. Um, I could have done with five more sex Much scenes. more detail. That, yeah. uh, I, I guess I need to go to Carlotta for that many more sex scenes. Um, but, or maybe LM Drew, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would recommend that one. That one I read um, in like less than an hour. Um, so it's, it's a very definitely... quick read. Yeah. And it's cute. It's sweet. And I, um, if you had not figured out, I prefer and low angst. And so, um low angst for sure i am not one of those people that's like i want to feel it in my soul no i don't um so <laughs> you want to feel it in your your creme de you want to feel it elsewhere <laughs> um your one-handed cat. read yeah uh so <laughs> that's why i'm here uh, i'm not lying about it i have dnf books for causing me too much anxiety um there was a there was a time where i was like carlotta if you don't like make this happen i'm gonna have to dnf out of here because i'm stressed i had I had, um, to, <laughs> I, I, I had to reassure you a whole lot a whole is lot this gonna this be okay so true like yeah. yes it will be okay and then as i started proving it to you that it was going to be okay you're like oh Okay, you actually keep your word. It's going to be okay. Like, I was being a fly things. on the wall during those conversations was just <laughs> impeccable. I read to escape anxiety, not to make more anxiety. Um, okay. So, so yeah, I would definitely recommend an abominable uh, fair. Yeah. Also, I did want to explain because this was very confusing to me when I was new to the book world. If you rent something on KU and then give it back, that is not returning a book. I was like, oh my God, am I committing like that, like the offense that everybody's stressed about? No, Uh (laughs) No, because KU is a library. KU, you think about it as a subscribed library. Library, yes. You're just buying the book and then you return it. Uh, It's not not like a, a financial return. No. no. And I do wish, I, I really wish Ruby Dixon got money for every time I reread pages of her books because she would have made a lot of money off of me. Um, <laughs> but. Um, like how made in bread. Uh, if we want to talk about orcs, <laughs> uh, it, would we like to segue into February? We can. I will say I am impressed that we waited this long. I didn't okay. want to jump the gun. I didn't want to, <laughs> I, I wanted us to be a few in before we hit our, one of our top top tier this is peak monster romance <laughs> yeah. excited for this one we are feral for orcs and orcs are the month of february i have already suggested that it might need to be a two-part episode um just because of the backlog of orc books that i have consumed um that carlotta has consumed that jersey has consumed um i off the top of my head can think of six orc books that i have read and i am currently reading another one orcs is february um we we are very excited about this i've actually very much uh, so Yes. Had to set aside an orc book to read my Yeti books this week. That's a big sacrifice for you. Yeah, I know. I know. And it was a Dom Seb orc book. Um, We'll we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Catherine Mm -hmm. Moon's new orc book. I have wanted to read that. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You you would like it. (laughs) That like, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. And then author KL Wyatt is coming out with her first book. She is big on TikTok. If you don't know who she is, I don't know what the title is, uh, but it's her name's KL Wyatt. And it is, I think it's a dark orc romance. Um, and it like mm-hmm. they're on the cover, they're like in the snow. And I'm just like, I thought it came out yesterday and was pissed to discover it comes out next week. Comes out uh the 24th of January, I believe. And I'm very excited to read that one. Um it looks really good. Um, and she's already got some, I always fumble with this, NSFW art not, up. Not, um, she's not safe for work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know what it stands for, but I always get the letters mixed up. It's like, yeah. she's already got some of that on her TikTok and Instagram teasing. I'm ready. So whenever you're ready, Kale Wyatt, uh, I'll be here. <laughs> 
There's another one. The Orc Boss by Lark Green is oh, a okay, monster yeah. mafia oh, romance. Yeah. Ah, yes. Oh, um, I have been looking forward kid- to that one. Kidnapping of Convenience, One Bed, High Heat, Slow Burn, um, Alleyway Sex. Alleyway Sex? I'm so I, I want alleyway sex. <laughs> um, you sold no, me at Orc Boss Mafia Romance. I mean, I although, mean, although Kidnapping of Convenience. What's... What is a Kidnapping of Convenience? But look at the chest. I know. Yeah. Manchester. Okay. Oh. So this we is have how it's issues, I... but I love it. She also has been posting about how she wants to be a guest on a podcast. So, hey. Ooh. Hey. Um, so maybe not this month or our orc month, because I feel like our orc month is going to go sideways. Um, There's going to be so much content for next month. Mm-hmm, a lot of content. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. A, a, a lot of stuffing. Yay. What did we decide? Uh, what, what is it? Uh, uh, it's come tastic. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> it is utterly fantastic and we're stoked. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's not even talking about who's like kind of the unofficial, like or, or the starter of the orcs, which is Fenley Fen. Yes. Um yes. so we'll definitely be discussing uh Fenley Fen. Um so that is our February plan is orcs. Um if we haven't made you drool for orcs, um we're not doing our job appropriately. Yeah. But if you're going to start with an orc, if you're going to start with an orc, I would start with a uh, thorn stuff. Um, that's oh, absolutely. That's a good one to start with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You it's can a keep good place blushing all you want, Carlotta, but yeah, it's, it um, really is a good book to start with. If you, know, you just yeah. kind of want to ease your way in to the orc world. <laughs> ease your way in. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Carlotta <laughs> is really, really good at describing on how to ease your way in. Like there's a lot she of, really is. A lot. Yeah. she is. She makes sure it fits. And that's that is we haven't even addressed the my favorite book of all time, which is Half Orcs Made in Bride yes. by Ruby Dixon. Yes. I have read it more times than is um probably mentally safe for me. Um so <laughs> we will be discussing that in minute detail. Uh yes. minute. Minute. Yes. Minute. Um <laughs> so why do we love monsters? <laughs> Find okay. out on our little mini episode why monsters. <laughs> why monsters? If we haven't made it clear, that was <laughs> January. That was January. Was Yetis, and I will say it was harder to find Yetis than we anticipated, which I think is kind of funny since people go looking for Yetis yeah. and never find them. Um, uh, <laughs> so um, we are already we we've said what orcs are next month. We we have months lined up, but we're already in talks about. Um, what's to come i'm pushing hard for winged beings um because i have some in mind yes so it but we are also open to if you have an out of left field um idea that you think maybe we haven't thought of uh we probably have because we've gone down many rabbit holes um i mean we've looked at the potato shifter book we know uh the that bear and is the squirrel <laughs> the bear and the squirrel gummy um, bears gummy mm-hmm. bears Gummy bears. Vera Valentine's balloon shifters. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> um, and squeal. Uh, okay. So, um, thank you for joining us for uh, yes, January. Thank you so much. And, uh, next month will be orcs, and um, it, next month we'll also be putting out a mini episode um, on why monsters. So, all right. Thank you for joining us. Tra- and trash cats out. Trash cats out. Trash cats out. Thank you.